on developments in the polity. President Bola Tinubu has called on Christians in Nigeria and around the world to emulate the sacrifices of Jesus Christ's compassion. The president, in his statement by his special advisor, Ajirin Galali, notes that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for humanity is an emphatic lesson for leaders and all Nigerians to yield to selflessness and compassion and be steadfast in the pursuit of a united, peaceful and prosperous nation. President Tinubu strongly commends Nigeria for the sacrifices they have made in the past few months for the nation to be stirred to the path of recovery and sustainable growth, assuring them that the seeds of patience which they have sown are beginning to sprout and will in no time bring forth an abundance of good fruits. And still on Good Friday, Bishop Dami Manza of Catholic Diocese in Yola, Adamawa State, has secured the release of five convicts seven various jail terms at the Yola Correctional Center. The bishop also donated both food and non-food items to the management of the center. In his remark, the assistant controller in charge of the center, Musa Gambari, thanked the bishop for the gesture, calling on other religious body to emulate such. Bishop Dami Manza asked the freed inmates to have a change of attitude and character. One of the released inmates, Mark Kizer, who spoke on behalf of others, promised that they will be better citizens going forward. Whether you are here through your fault or through no fault of yours, when you go outside, be a different person. Be a changed person. Be a better person. Prove to everybody that you are a very good person. President Bola Tinubu is 72 years today. This is his first birthday as president of Nigeria. He has said that we will not hold a birthday event in deference to the prevailing situation in the country as he promises to use the occasion of his birthday to reflect and rededicate himself to the task of building a more stable, secure, prosperous and united Nigeria. President Bola Tinubu has asked that his birthday should be celebrated low-key, without the usual fanfare. He said because of the present mood of the country and the killing of officers and men of the army and police in Delta State and the spate of security breaches across the country, there should be no form of birthday event. The, president and commander in chief of the Minister of State for Defense, Bello Matawale, insists the president's efforts and directive to guarantee the safety of lives and property has paid off. He um, gave us the mandate that we must listen to people and we must do what is right and we should make sure that uh, we uh, bring the level of insecurity to a, a minimal, uh, very level. President Bola Tinubu means so much to different people. His ministers appreciate his leadership and they are glad to have the opportunity to serve. Uh, Nigerians are now a close confidant and political ally of the president. Honorable James Faleke described the president as a special child. He acknowledged President Tinubu's contribution to the country. The gain is enormous because everybody will now start to gain the benefits of this reform. So for me, he has come at a difficult time and he's weathering the storm. Nigeria is going to be better under Bola Ahmed. May God continue to bestow upon you continued grace, continued wisdom, courage, health, and everything that you require to turn this country around. Hanatsu Musawa, the Minister of Arts, Culture and Creative Economy is excited that President Tinubu is interested in harnessing the potentials and economic opportunities in the art and creative industry. The foresight that the President has had to open up this space in a way that we can give something back to a new generation, I think is absolutely genius and I think, you know, history is going to really judge him well. My father. This is to wish you a very wonderful birthday in this wonderful month of Ramadan and in this wonderful box of Anamah Musalana.
There are different prayers organized for the president by the two main religious faiths. There are also different charitable gestures to commemorate the president's 72nd birthday. But President Tinubu says he wants to remain focused on governance and improving the fortunes of Nigerians. Temi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Let's take a short break and when we return, it will be time to speak with our guest of the day. Please stay with us. Welcome back everyone. Tonight we'll take a look at the issues surrounding the decision of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria to shut down KFC, a food vendor within Nigerian airports. Joining me uh, tonight for this conversation is Dr. J. Kepele. He's a policy development analyst and convener disability inclusion Nigeria. Uh, Honorable Bashiru Dawudu, uh, who is the chairman house committee on disabilities and senior citizens matter, will join us uh, later on. Dr. Pele, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Jumoke. Um, happy Good Friday to Nigerians and happy birthday to His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Now, uh, you're the convener of Disability Conclusion Nigeria. Uh, this recent incident, what does it mean to you? How do you react to this? And how much work do you think we still have on our hands? Uh, Jim, okay, um, I will look at it in two perspectives. Uh, one uh, is the fact that I am not surprised at the level of uh, discrimination and inhuman treatment that is meted at persons with disability um, especially uh, this young, innocent man, uh, Adebola uh, Wenga Daniel. Um, it is very disheartening, and I strongly condemn the act uh, by this uh, KFC outlet and, and other uh, organizations or individuals that are discriminating against persons with disability. Uh, it is unacceptable and uh, should not be seen in the fabric of our society. However, uh, it is also very important and of note to me, the, uh, the traction, the momentum, the, the, how virile the news has gone, uh, simply because this young man is from a privileged family. He's the son of a former governor of uh, uh, Governor, uh, His Excellency Governor, uh, former Governor uh, Winga Daniels, you know. And the quick response uh, of government and uh, several individuals uh, is, is very encouraging. However, what would have happened if this young man is not from a privileged home? What happened when the likes of Dr. Chike was discriminated against and taken advantage of at the airport? What happens if the unknown individual or citizen goes through the same thing that this young privileged individual had gone through? Now, I'm not saying that it shouldn't make news or be in the head headline. What I'm saying is, what I'm also saying is, whatever is happening right now because of the status of this young man should happen to everyone. It is the rights and privileges of every Nigerian with disability to get the same attention, to get the same response, and greater uh, result, you know. But... Uh, Jim Oke, I know and I've taken time to research and look into the fabric of uh, KFC. And, and there are 
very well known for this kind of acts. Um, I, I, two years ago in, in Malaysia, uh, a young woman uh, went through the same discriminatory attitude uh, from staff of KFC, you know. And then, of course, uh, uh, equally a few years ago, there's uh, also a case of, uh, in, 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 in Georgia uh, where a, a staff of KFC uh, filed a complaint against uh, KFC for discriminatory practice. And, and he was paid $30,000, you know, as compensation. So KFC is known for this kind of attitude. But also, it's also uh, because I like to balance my story. I've also researched and found out that they took some measures uh, in, in enhancing their inclus the inclusivity of persons with disability within their employment. Uh, I, I researched to find out that they had to create uh, even special restaurants uh, for, for persons with disability, you know, which also uh, violates the principles of inclusion because you don't need to create special restaurants for persons with disability when you should be creating inclusive restaurants that persons with disability will be part of, you know. So, we, 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 we see these things, and, uh, and it's very disheartening for people like us who are at the forefront of disability inclusion. But uh, oh, no matter what happens, we, we cannot give up. We'll keep pushing, and we keep engaging, and we keep demanding for accountability. And I want to use this opportunity to call on government that we need greater stiffer uh, penalty for KFC. I think the National Assembly, I'm glad my friend, the House Committee on Persons with Disability, uh, is joining us on the program, uh, hopefully. Uh, I, I think, I think the, the House of Representatives, uh, and I must commend the Speaker who has been very proactive, the Deputy Speaker, who is a champion of persons with disability, they need to invite the management of KFC, put them on the spot, and demand not just an apology. Do you know the impact, the psychological impact, that what happened to this young man has taken toll on him? Do you Absolutely. know the fear that it has, it has driven around the community of persons with disability that this kind of inhuman treatment can happen to anyone? All right, Dr. Pele, but, but how much exposure... Uh, is this issue bringing to the non-implementation or non-enforcement of the Disability Act in Nigeria? Well, non-enforcement uh, and non-implementation uh, has adverse effect uh, in any aspect of the law. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, one of the things that plays out when there is no uh, concerted effort to implement uh, or enforce. Uh, the, the, the first thing you get is that there will be a continued marginalization of persons with disability. Continued marginalization of persons with disability. Uh, there will also be increase in discrimination of persons with disability. You know, and of course, uh, when uh, Acts like the Discrimination and, and Prohibition Act is not implemented, it will give birth to poor education, you know, because when it's not, uh, when the provision that, that borders on education is not implemented, what do you get? You get educational gap, you know, poor health outcome, worsening economic condition uh, and inequality for persons with disability. You know, I can go on and on and on and on. Um, of course, there is also a legal dimension and repercussion to non-implementation because these uh, laws, uh, you know, has its root to international treaties, Convention of Persons, uh, Rights of Persons with Disability. 
the African protocol on, on the rights of persons with disability, uh, when we are not implementing the provision uh, that is in line or in consort with the international treaties and instrument, it's a violation and Nigerian ca can be held accountable. So, so it, it has a spiral effect uh, from one thing to the other, you know, where uh, people with disability have absolutely no hope uh, in, in, in the whole polity. And, and, and I think uh, some concerted effort has to, be, uh, it has, to, has to be made to ensure that uh, there is a, a true implementation and enforcement of the, the act, even though we are the verge of uh, 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 sort of uh, looking at the possibility of uh, bringing some new clauses and new uh, aspect of the law uh, in, in the process of, uh, of, of repealing and replacing some, some of the one-out uh, provisions. All right, so we'll come back to the legal angle uh, to this uh, whole issue. But I mean, let's also talk about an aptitude of government. KFC is a private establishment. I want us to talk about accessibility to even public buildings owned by governments. The petitioner in this case says for the past three years, the lift to one of the uh, lounges in MMIA has been out of service. This clearly shows that even the government is not doing its own part. Exactly. Uh, well, we've, um, my organization and, and, and several other organizations that are working in this space, we've been going around the country and, and doing uh, what we call accessibility audits, uh, an audit of public uh, building, public spaces, um, public toilets, uh, private entities. And we've done quite a lot of audits across board. And, and the findings are alarming. Uh, the findings are very disheartening, knowing fully well that most public buildings, you know, you'll be shocked, are not accessible. And, and, and this accessibility uh, of, of public building uh, goes from even uh, government uh, institutions, um, including, surprisingly, if you go around the Asorot, you will not say that Asorot is in total compliance. So there will be an aspect of uh, the, the structure there that are not uh, disability friendly. And that is not acceptable, you know. And of course, when we talk about accessibility, uh, Jimoke, it doesn't end with building. Websites need to be accessible. Accessibility means that everyone can have access both to information space and the uh, whatever that 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 person sh wants to have access to, you know. So it, it's important that uh, to note here that and, and very discouraging that most public buildings and institutions are not accessible at all. Uh, but to 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 cry about the problem is one thing, but to talk solution. Now, my organization and several other organization, and I keep saying that because we're not the only one, and several other organizations are embarking on very strategic uh, but um, result-oriented measures. For instance, we have gone into partnership with the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Uh, we recognize them and the veritable role that they will play if we must achieve accessibility, especially when it comes to structure and also spaces. So the, the president of, of that great institution was in our office to sign an MOU with us for us to collaborate uh, beginning from the day we signed that MOU, two, three, two, three weeks ago, I, saw, I believe. Um, no architect must draw or design any structure without that structure being compliant with universal design, that means it must accommodate everyone. Now, furthermore, we are going to embark, and we started embarking on advocacy. We were at the office uh, of the deputy speaker, you know, and the deputy speaker, who is a dear friend of mine, has pledged uh, 
to work with the persons with disability community. The speaker, uh, or, uh, you know, is it's, it's another champion of persons with disability, you know. And, of course, uh, we're happy with the, uh, the, the uh, selection of uh, Honorable Dr. Bashiru, who is the chairman of House Committee on Persons, uh, uh, for persons with Disability. You know. So there is, there is strategic move, but it's like a drop uh, in, in the bucket that, that we want to turn into an ocean. You know. it's, it's very, very, very small uh, what we are achieving compared to what is out there. And the more government takes this serious and take strict measure, um, and, and also using the likes of KFC as an example of, of, of a private institution that flagrantly uh, discriminate persons with disability and, and, and without a choice, that we, without, without any reason whatsoever, you know. So KFC has a lot to do. Um, the public institution has a lot to do, and, and individuals as well has a lot to do if we must win this race, and we will, by his grace. Can, uh, whether or not it was legal for funds to shut down KFC, as a stakeholder, what does the law say about this? Well, first, uh, Jumoke, you must understand that I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I don't need uh, to be a lawyer to know the simple, godly, and national laws. You know, first, it was not; it, it, it's absolutely legal, based on the provision of the Discrimination and Prohibition Act it is legal to shut down KFC. And in fact, they should go beyond shutting down KFC to ensuring, I know I've read and people are saying public apology. Public apology doesn't mean anything to me. K KFC needs to pay a, a very stiffer pen penalty for what they have done. Because even when people appeal to this staff of KFC uh, to be very cautious what he was doing, he, she was, he or she was adamant, you know. I have, I have experienced walking into uh, one of their outlets, you know, and because of my poor sight, I couldn't see uh, the, the, what I wanted to buy. And I was trying to get one of their staff to help me. And you could see that lethargic attitude, very insulting and demeaning look, and, and almost like, oh, no, I'm very busy. Can't you see? You understand? So, it, 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 and they are not the only one. There are several others. This young man is just um, a privileged person, an educated person who spoke out, you know. But how about those who have been stomaching this uh, ill treatment and, 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 and behaving like is is the new normal, you know. So uh, the, the, the laws uh, supports what government had done, and I think they should do more, you know, uh, and, and use this organization as an example so that no other person will do what they've done. But, but there's a whole lot to be done if we must fix the rot. And I think and I want to believe that this president, in his seriousness, would take this absolutely very serious. Moment. Uh, is there a need for the amendment of the uh, Disability Act uh, in Nigeria? Well, the events of or that is happening have played out one of the key factors in the act that needs attention. Uh, and that is uh, the, the, the enforcement mechanism. Uh, there has to be clarity on the enforcement mechanism. And if you put up a provision of enforcement and you don't give what is necessary to apply that enforcement, uh, then you will end up not enforcing anything at all. So 
so in terms of what needs to be um, addressed in the proposed uh, amendment, we're looking at enforcement mechanism. Uh, we're looking at economic uh, equ uh, equality, you know, creating a clear pathway to get persons with disability out of poverty. Um, there's a, a need to look at the legal aid um, uh, framework, you know. Uh, there is an institution called legal aid, but I don't think there is a holistic um, uh, inclusion of what they can do for us in terms of uh, our inability to afford legal fees and engaging the best hands to fight for us. Uh, the Legal Aid Council needs to come clear and, and support us in, in this process. The, the, the other thing is uh, the engagement of international partners and funding mechanism, you know, uh, which is not very clear in the first, um, the, the, the first act that we, we, we have put out there. So there's a need to look at some of these issues uh, that, that needs to be addressed. And of course, the, the issue of technology, it was not properly addressed in the, in the uh, present uh, act. There, there needs to, uh, we need to look at that again. And uh, there are many things, education, inclusive education, you know. Right, so I asked uh, inclusion Dr. Inclusion in, in its broader was... sense. Right. So I ask that question because for someone like uh, Honorable uh, Bashir Daudu, he feels like uh, the Disability Act in Nigeria is inadequate. I mean, I wish he was here to help us shed more light on what the House of Reps uh, is doing in this case. He says it does not clearly and specifically address the children with disabilities, does not address gender issues, protection of children with disabilities, and violence against, against mm -hmm. persons. Mental with health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, so there, there's no doubt. Uh, sorry, Jim, okay? Please go on. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and let me also, I don't need an IQ of a mushroom. I don't need an IQ of uh, a legal IQ of, of, of a mushroom to know that, you know, that there is no law that is perfect. There is no law that is perfect. When a law comes into effect, it's, there's also the opportunity to interrogate that law and bring up uh, emerging issues, you know, uh, things that were not captured when, that, when the, the law was enacted, uh, and also to look at weak clauses that can be repealed and replaced with stronger clauses. Uh, so what we have right now may not be good enough, but it's better for us to have it and then begin to look at the good enough clauses and uh, laws that we need to bring in to strengthen our aspiration and to ensure that we are protected and provided for, not just in line with the act, but in line with the, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is a, another aspect that the community is looking at, because now we're going through the Constitution review. So it is not, it is not a totally write-off law. Rather, I agree that we need to strengthen it. We need to look at the weak links and bring up what will make it better going forward. All right, so let's talk about the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, recently, the commission says it has transitioned from the era of advocacy to the era of enforcement. How will you describe its impact and how can it be strengthened? Well, I, I want to say here that um, we are grateful uh, that this young man, uh, Dr. James Lalo, um, 
was chosen as the executive secretary of the commission. I think he's done um, very well, uh, taking into consideration the very slim pause that he's operating with. Um, the commission had done well uh, in terms of uh, advocacy, uh, have done well in terms of generating ideas and implementing those ideas. But their strongest, uh, the, the, their weakest link is lack of funding. Um, and again, some, somewhat um, not, not too strong capacity in terms of human capital development. They, they don't have all the technical individuals and knowledge uh, to drive most of the things that they want to do, you know. Now, they want to go into enforcement, you know. <laughs> it's also important to note here that they have a very small team of lawyers uh, within the commission, you know. And so for them to succeed in enforcing uh, the provisions of the act uh, that, of course, you know, uh, anyone that have not complied is in violation, you know. Everyone and anyone that have not complied with the provision of that act is in violation, you know. So my concern is I would advise my, my dear friend, uh, James, and his team. Um, we do have a very good working relationship with them. It's important for us to focus and direct our energy in creating awareness for what we want to enforce before enforcing a provision that the people you're trying to enforce those provisions against are actually ignorant of the law. There's a need for greater, greater awareness of the provisions uh, with which we want to enforce before carrying out the physical enforcement. There's a need for very important and strategic motions, even within the House, to pass. And, of course, funding. You need funds to enforce. You need capacity and competencies to enforce. You need courage to enforce. You also need government backings to enforce. Tell me, no matter how the energy of activism in the life of the commission, will they go to Arsenal Rock and then want to enforce the, <laughs> the aspects of the acts that Asso Rock is in violation of, who will listen to you? How will you pass the gate? And so for me, we need to concentrate our energy and create a lot more awareness of specific provisions that people are in violation of. The effort right. has always been on accessibility and discrimination. There are other provisions. I was in one of the biggest, uh, one of the big um, um, hospitality institution, and I parked my vehicle and left my driver. And they came there and forcefully asked my driver to move the vehicle. Why? Because I don't have disability. And ignorantly, the man, the young man, was trying to defend himself, and I until I came out and threatened to take them to court to, uh, so that in court I will go and interpret the fact that I do have the disability. And I'm sitting here, Jumoke, I'm not even seeing the screen. <laughs> I'm not even seeing the screen. I'm just blindly speaking to you, believing that you're seeing me. So that's part of our issues. And right. for someone who is ignorant, how can you then go ahead and enforce the person? All right, Dr. Pele, let's take a break. And when we come back, we will continue this conversation. 
You're watching Politics Tonight. We'll go on a break and I'll be right back. Please stay with us. Our planet, our home, threatened by man's activities with fears of mass extinction on the rise. On Green Angle, we examine the issues that affect our environment, seek solutions to put us on track to secure and restore a cleaner and greener world for generations to come. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Politics Tonight, and I've been speaking with Dr. J. Kepele, Policy Development Analyst, Convener, Devel uh, Disability Inclusion in Nigeria. Dr. Kepele, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, in October, uh, the President signed the instrument of ratification of the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Rights of Persons with Disability in Nigeria. How well is this being implemented? Well, that's a much more broader and holistic legal instrument uh, that needs all kinds of interpretation, uh, including uh, clarification. You know, I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, the community of persons with disability, we're grateful that the president um, have signed uh, and ratified the aspect that concerns Nigeria, uh, which makes us part of the African Union uh, effort, uh, you know, uh, towards the, uh, a holistic legal instrument for disability. Um, so at this point in time, we are not uh, actually talking about uh, implementation process. We talk, we're going through a holistic ratification process, um, after which uh, there will be a more clearer um, interpretation uh, by Ministry of Justice uh, with support from the National Commission for Persons with Disability, and of course, international development partners and local CSOs like us. You know, uh, you can imagine that we're struggling to implement the Discrimination and Prohibition Act, and now we're talking about the African Act. You know, so we haven't we haven't started, you know, unveiling the total content of of uh, the um, the African uh, Charter uh, on, on this, the African Union Charter on Disability. We haven't uh, started looking at that. Uh, oh, right know. now, we're struggling with the local law, and and until we are able to do most of that, and don't forget that most some of the clauses in that uh, very important document uh, reflects on the uh, Disability Act, which we have in the country. So once that is being implemented, uh, it would also mean that we're implementing uh, that of the African Union, you know. All right. All right, then. So what more reforms do you think uh, Nigeria needs as a country to ensure better welfare for people or persons with disabilities? Uh, if you can, if you can uh, speak up a little bit, um, uh, Kate. Did you get my Somehow question? The technology. Yes, right. I can okay. hear you better now. Yes. All right then. So, what reforms do you think Nigeria needs as a country to ensure better welfare for PWDs? Well, there's a whole 
lot of uh, reforms that needs to take place uh, for the betterment of persons with disability. Um, there is legal reforms uh, which touches on the uh, disability acts that we're working on and all that. Um, but also, more to that, you're talking about access to justice. The issue of access to justice uh, for persons with disability have not been holistically addressed. If, I may say, have not been addressed. You know, um, you will be shocked to know that the very first time the conference of judges, uh, which I think it's well over 50 years and above, uh, the, the only first time they heard about disability um, in, in, as part of their uh, workshop or conference was two years ago when I was invited and I took the community of persons with disability uh, to that conference. You know, and so many judges, including the then chief judge of the federation, were shocked to hear some of the things that we're telling him about disability. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I've read a little bit more to know that in, in court practice, in the courtroom, that is what they call uh, practice direction, um, you know, the things that the, the judge would do, I hope. My explanation uh, is, is perfect. Uh, what happens in the courtroom and, and, and the behavior and, and procedure that um, lawyers and, 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 and court officers and those who are in court uh, will have to undertake. Many of them are not disability inclusive. You know, um, Take, for instance, a person with disability with, who has albinism uh, will not be allowed to sit in front because there is a body of uh, senior advocates of Nigeria. And think about someone like Rex, my friend, uh, who is a lawyer of about 23 years in practice. The fact that Rex will not be able to sit four or five benches away from the judge and see anything that the judge is doing. So, so there needs to be a reform, in uh, a legal reform, uh, focusing on access to justice. And, of course, many of the uh, legal instruments that needs to be repealed to accommodate inclusive practice uh, and the yearnings of persons with disability. Um, the other one is social reforms. You know, um, there's economic inequality that affects adversely persons with disability. The poverty level within the community of persons with disability are alarming. And all of that needs to be addressed. I am very shocked that the, 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 the president has put together economic team and not one person with disability is in that economic team. How mm -hmm. would you cater for us when you don't know us? If there is, I don't know. But I took time out to look at the list and all that. I didn't see any person with disability. And, and Jimoke, let me debunk this very stale concept of saying that we are working for everybody. No, you're not working for everybody. Because, yes, we are part of everybody, but we have a peculiar issues, peculiar challenges, peculiar perspective that only us in that room can let you know. All right. There are so, organizations that have been... Are you saying the appointment of uh, Mohammed Issa as the presidential aide on disability matters is not enough? Mohammed Issa is not in the Economic Council. As a matter I... of fact, Mohammed Issa's office is not in Aso Rock. I hope you know that. You know? So he's far from decision makers. He's very far from decision makers. 
Ask Muhammad Isa to tell you how many times he has seen the president in, in two months, except maybe in, in events. And of course, as an event, as a government official, he can be given access, but most times he will not. You know? So it, it's not just us being appointed, but like I said, that's just a segment of an appointment. Special Assistant to the President on Disability Matters. Is he in the Economic Council? He hasn't told us, and I don't think he is. You know, many committees that have been appointed by government, and I don't, I'm not uh, finger pointing to uh, President Bola Ahmed's uh, government alone. Governments of this country and several African countries don't understand in inclusivity and its implication. The cost of excluding people far more exceeds uh, 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 the cost of in inclusion. All right, Dr. Pele. In other words, if, if you don't make us part of your decision, how on earth will you know most of our issues? All right, so that's well noted. Now, because of time, uh, what other international conventions on people uh, with disabilities do you think Nigeria needs to domesticate? Well, we're already part of a, a lot of international uh, conventions and instruments and bodies. You know, the only thing we need to do is to do what the provision of that partnership and engagement entails. We, have, we, 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 have, we rectified the CRP, the Convention of, of Rights of Persons with Disability. We're part of the African Union uh, um, um, Charter on, 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 on disability. Um, we're part of several international bodies. Um, the the Re Rehabilitation International and so on and so forth. Many of them, the, the community actually subscribed to the, some of those organizations without government support, which shouldn't be. Um, by next year, there's a global summit on, on disability. And I think this is the right time the government begins to uh, put, into, put together the team that will go there and also give us the opportunity to sit together and decide what our future entails as it pertains to global uh, disability rights and, uh, and, and, and empowerment. Hmm. I mean, so to finally wind down this conversation, what steps do you think should be taken to ensure full implementation of inclusion in all government agencies and prostitutes? <laughs> well, um, full implementation of uh, inclusion, a very, very good question, Jimoke. Um, it's a Herculean task, but it's a task that must be done. Um, full implement implementation requires, one, legal instrument, two, social instrument, three, political instrument, even spiritual instruments, you know, and, and all of these things, every one of them goes hand, hand in hand. If we must have an inclusive society, we must have the will, the, the seriousness, the strategy to go all out to create the framework that allows for holistic inclusion, not partial inclusion, not handout inclusion, but holistic inclusion that addresses access to health, access to education, human rights, concrete measures that goes against people that discriminates persons with disability and trample upon their rights and privileges. All right. 
I mean, gladly, this is an ongoing conversation. And I'm definitely sure that with more conversations, more awareness and more advocacy, we will get there. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I've been speaking with Dr. J.K. Pele, Policy Development Analyst, Convener Disability Inclusion in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you, Jumoke. Thank you for having me and thank you for the management of TVC. We need champions like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on X at CVC News NG and at Online Work at WO using the hashtag Politics Tonight. But also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash CVC News Nigeria. I am Olaju Moke Olatuji. Have a great weekend. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dettol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. Kinde suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dettol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. We're live in the open market for Apex Tenex Challenge. My people, today now, today I will show you how the power of new Apex Tenex gives your toilet a better cleaning than bleach. Than bleach? Yes, so. Impossible. Toilets have stains which bleach cannot clean effectively. But Apex is thicker and sticks better, which gives Tenex better cleaning versus bleach and kills germs. Oh, wow. You can now see that Apex is better than bleach. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Today, there are many complex, boring, expensive, and useless exercise machines in the market. Or you pay over 400,000 naira a year for gym membership and never go. ShopX TV is proud to introduce Total Crunch Evolution, the compact, versatile fitness solution that is perfect for you. With Total Crunch, you get a complete fitness workout in one machine. Say goodbye to ineffective and complicated exercise machines. Now, you have the power to transform your fitness journey and get the body you have always wanted right in the comfort of your own home. Total Crunch is the efficient and effective way to build muscle, tone and tighten your legs, shape your back and pectorals while strengthening your core and defining your abs. Now that's totally effective to get the body you want. With Total Crunch, your whole body works out at the same time. Only Total Crunch can put your whole body in motion as you burn calories and lose weight. Just one fitness routine a week will achieve serious results in four weeks. Total Crunch Evolution has enhanced the way I work out and the results I achieve. It's not just a fitness equipment, it's a life changer. This versatile, time-saving machine is perfect for anyone looking to lose weight or stay in shape. Trust me, this is the game changer you've been waiting for. With my busy schedule, finding time to work out and stay in shape has always been a challenge. Until I discovered the Total Crunch Evolution, it's a lifesaver. Traditional exercise equipment is large, complex, takes up so much space in your home, and you could be paying up to 400,000 Naira for annual gym fees. Get the Total Crunch Evolution, the two-in-one fitness solution to save the cost and transform your body from the convenience of your home. 
Similar equipment costs 300,000 Naira, but you can get the Total Crunch Evolution for not 300,000 Naira, not even 200,000 Naira. Order right now and get your Total Crunch Evolution for just 179,950 Naira only. And that's not all. You can get our Total Crunch Evolution in two easy payments of 89,975 Naira. That's right. Pay twice to get your Total Crunch. And remember, if you order now, you get the Total Crunch Evolution delivered to you for free anywhere you are in Nigeria. And it comes with a ShopEx 30-day money-back guarantee. Call the number on your screen now or scan the code to place your order now. But hurry, limited stock available. The proceeding is a paid presentation brought to you by ShopEx TV. We will invite all appointments to arise to the faith of greatness with our rise agenda. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, 